Okay, let's take a look at this uh, really nice duplexer that uh, Ken sent into the channel from uh, Ohio Microwave. It's a uh, ClearCom Technologies, and it's very high in frequency, so I'm not going to have any use for this thing. It is, uh, he gave me the data sheet for it. It is a 5.7 to 5.8 gigahertz data link duplexer. So, um, I don't know if there's anything exciting here that we can read about or not. This is kind of like military grade data sheet here. Um, <laughs> field verification, blah, 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 all this boilerplate. I think people haven't heard that term before. Boilerplate is all of the stuff you have to put in the documents just every single time. All right, so here we go. Frequencies are channel one is 5.7 and channel two is 5.8 and they're 48 megahertz bandwidths. So that's pretty narrow for that high frequency. Assertion loss uh, 2dB, stop, gan stop uh, channels 40 to 60 dB, isolation, that type of thing. It'll handle uh, 10 watts average, 100 watt peak, 50 ohms, this were 1.3, blah, blah, blah. blah. All right, so one of the things that I really, really like, uh, if I can find things cheap at junk stores, great. If people donate things, great. Um, so uh, one of the best things I can do on this channel is education. And a lot of times things like this are just out of reach to be torn apart, right? <laughs> it's like, can I, can I rip that apart? You know, somebody's at work, you know, well, that cost us a thousand dollars, right? No, you can't rip it apart. Um, so yeah, I say that the very best thing I can do for my channel is education and tearing things apart and looking at th how things are actually made and stuff. Do a couple things. One is that it educates you sort of how things are working and stuff. But I think one of the maybe even more, bene more beneficial things is to get people interested, right? Maybe somebody's done, you know, IC design and suddenly they see RF and they go, oh my God, I've been missing out on this really cool thing. Or maybe somebody has studied physics and they go, oh, you know, this is a lot like that stuff I studied in physics. Maybe I should go into engineering. I should go work for some company and build things like this because I can do the, uh, I can do the equations for these things and maybe help them out. Um, so anyway, I think, I think educationally, this is going to be a great, great thing. Um, so what we're going to do is... Take apart. <laughs> Let's see. Well, that was a lot of screws. <laughs> um, and I only stripped one. So I did, I did okay. So um, uh, what I want to do with you guys is to have you do a thought experiment, okay? Uh, this is basically a bandpass filter over here and a bandpass filter over here. You've seen me sweep duplexers before. There's a peak and a peak. And so uh, you'd think, okay, I'm going to have a lot of L's and C's. You've seen bandpass filters and stuff. You know, there might be a low pass section, light high pass section that, that overlap and stuff like that. You see me take apart some things that have like a really, really nice, uh, maybe an aluminous substrate or a Teflon substrate with lots of microwave wizardry, all those little uh, interdigitated uh, filters and stuff that you see all that, all that voodoo magic. Um, this is up at uh, 5.8 gigahertz, so that type of design is really well suited for, for doing things like this. You've seen people take apart a, a uh, uh, maybe on other channels, a really uh, high, high value uh, spectrum analyzers and stuff that have all kinds of voodoo circuitry and everything. Um, so what do you have, what do you think is inside here? Okay, so I want you to guess, before I tear open this up, I want you to guess how it's going to look inside, okay? So here we go. Think, think, think. All right, let's take the lid off and look at all that cool stuff inside. It's aluminum. <laughs> There's nothing in here. There is nothing in here. It's just milled out aluminum, okay? Uh, that's all it is. So, uh, talk about equations and modeling of this thing and the physics behind it. Oh my 
goodness. Each one of these is a resonant cavity and the size and the shape and these cutouts from cavity to cavity and the spacing and everything. And then how's the tuning done? The tuning is done with all of these little screws that poke through. So all the ones that I didn't take out, these are all of the adjustments, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 per side. So 16 adjustments on this side. 16 adjustments on this side. And so, yeah, this is what duplexers look like inside. They're just hollow, hollow milled out aluminum. Um, I don't know if this one is silver plated. It looks like it might be. Uh, that would be my guess. It's probably all silver, silver plated. Um, it feels like aluminum. It doesn't feel like brass to me. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how you silver plate aluminum, but that's probably another story. Somebody probably knows how to do that. And then, uh, and then there's some wizardry on the end. How do you combine the two? How do you how do you perform that splitter that that splitting and combining or whatever? Um, how is that little post done in there? So there's a lot of magic just right here, at at the very at the very output of this thing. So let me let me go down a little bit closer. All right, I've changed the exposure on the camera as well to give you a better view of uh, of the uh, of what's going on in here. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> this is a wonderful thing. Um, to be able to model this, there are really, really fancy modeling programs that do Maxwell's equations in 3D. And um, yeah, there's one guy, he spent his life doing this, right? Um, I, spent, I spent about four years modeling photons rattling around inside of an LED chip right? You can imagine those, those LED chips are super, 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 super tiny, right? And I spent four years modeling all of the physics inside of the LED, how it bounces around, how things are produced in the, in the quantum, quantum well, um, all of the different index of refractions, all the different scattering parameters, the shape, the geometry, uh, photon conversions, uh, photon recombinations, uh, absorption, uh, dielectrics, all that kind of stuff, all inside of a tiny, 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 tiny little chip. So yeah, there are guys that do that. There's probably a guy who's been modeling this thing and he has this wonderful program where this thing is completely modeled and he knows every little nuance about it. Um, and he, he is their duplexer guy because there's not going to be many people who will have the time to spend uh, on the physics of, of something like this. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's an amazing beast, to be sure. Um, and then, uh, so why ha why so many screws? Why, why did I have to take so many screws off when it's just a plate? Why aren't there just like four screws at the corner and you're done? Well, you can't have any leakage, and so there's several ways to do that. You can put in RF gasket 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 materials and stuff, different ways to do it, uh, or just start screwing it down every so far. So. You need to have a contact um, less than, um, ideally less than a quarter wavelength. Um, so the spacing between the screws is critical. The spacing of the screws has to be within a certain distance, so you can't get you can't get it as a as a slot antenna. You can't you can't you can't set this thing up to like radiate across. There has to be a certain length that creates. A short circuit that the EM wave, the electromagnetic wave, doesn't want to go that way. It finds a, a better path someplace else. And so, so even even the spacing of the screws is a science. Okay, and that guy who did all this modeling, yeah, he'll tell you what the spacing of the screw has to be. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a this is a wonderful beast, and uh, certainly I didn't destroy it. I can just pop it back together and it'll work just fine. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very cool. One thing that I found very interesting when I took it apart was every single screw was a pan head uh, Phillips screw, except there were two flat head screws, okay? Uh, yeah, there were, there were two fl flat head screws. Let me, let me change the exposure here so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, there were two flat head screws that went here and here, okay? And those are there. 
So you can put a sticker on top of them and say that don't remove this, right? The only reason, it's the only reason to have a different, every, every single other screw is exactly the same, except for these two screws that have these uh, flat heads on it. So you can put a sticker over the top. So even thought was put about on what type of screw do we use? Um, yeah, it's, pre it's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna blow it out, blow out the camera again, so yeah. A very cool, a very cool beast. I hope I surprised you. Um, uh, raise your hand if you've ever done the device physics for something like this. Actually, have uh, modeled it in a CAD program. Nobody's doing this by hand. You're not writing equations. You're not. You, you need to know the equations. You need to understand the equations. You need to be able to to put things together. But then the CAD program comes in, and and you have to be able to drive it correctly.